All right, so jumping back into 3D Studio Max, we haven't made it quite to an animation. We've just applied materials to the object. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set up a light, uh, or multiple lights actually, a camera, and a backdrop. Uh, and once I have those things in place, I'll have the ability to make at least one rendering of a single frame and see kind of what I'm working with. From there, we'll move into how to actually animate a sequence and set up a rendering to run for multiple frames. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to jump back to the four screen view, and to do that, I'm just going to click this little toggle down here. And I'm going to find my object, uh, here it is, floating in this view. So to build the backdrop, I need to come to my Create panel, which is the little um, sun kind of icon here. And I don't want you know anything too complicated. All I need is a uh, line, really. So under uh, the, the Shapes, I'm going to click Line. Uh, and this works similar to uh, Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to enlarge this one panel as where if I just click two points it makes a straight segment but if I click and drag it kind of gives me those bezier controls so I'm gonna just click once here and uh, by holding shift I can actually make sure that it's completely flat and then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna click and drag to get a rounded corner and you can see I want a really soft rounded edge uh, then the background is going to taper up and again, now no, no longer am I holding shift. I'm just going to click once, and then again I'm rounding another corner. So I'm going to click and hold and round that corner out. Click again, and then just drag a little bit of a top for the backdrop. This will help with some bounce light. Uh, and then I'm going to right-click to end the command. Now, really, that backdrop is much bigger than I need it to be. So uh, up here I have move, rotate, and scale and I'm just going to scale it uh, here would be just on the X and Y, this would be just the Y, this would be just the X, but this is X, Y, and Z when I get the very middle. So I'm just going to scale it down and then move it so that it's uh, a better size for my object. So I'll leave it there. Now if I check in, uh, you can select my object here um, and I'm panning around with middle click in the top view, uh, you can see it's its position relative to the object. So here I'm going to drag it around and now I need to extrude it. I need to make it into a surface of some sort. So again uh, we're going to go to the modify tab and our modifier I can type EX to get to extrude and I can drag now how much I want to extrude. I can negative, positive and with my segments I kind of control how much you know uh, uh, kind of iso curves is what we call them in Rhino uh, this object has. Uh, so now when I drag it around, you can see here in the perspective view, uh, I have this nice backdrop. And maybe it's maybe it's not long enough uh, in, in width, so again I can go to scale, and in perspective view here, I can just drag on the X, and it gets longer, and I can go to move, and I'll slide it over, and I just want like this nice big backdrop that I'll have a soft gradient, which you can already see in the back there. Um, I know that I also don't want it to be yellow. So again, I'm going to bring up materials by hitting M. And uh, I can make a custom material that's just the generic. So I'm going to right click in the workspace, materials, a V-Ray material, and then this V-Ray MTL. It's the standard material. And this one's just white. Well, it's a light gray actually, so I'll push it up towards white. And I can just drag this guy, oh, get the little nub there, drag it onto the backdrop. And now I have a white backdrop. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to set up my camera. Uh, so again, it's I've got to create a camera. So I go to create, and you can click the camera icon here. I have several different types of camera to create, but I need a V-Ray camera. And I'm going to click V-Ray physical camera, and I'm just going to drag. Oh, I actually hit shift. I didn't mean to, so I'm going to edit undo. Edit. Uh, it won't let me undo. All right, so I'll delete this camera. And I'll come back over and click physical camera and just drag this camera as straight as I can get it so it's looking head on at the object. Uh, you can see the camera is actually low right here but we're going to adjust that this way um, by coming back to just my select object. Um, it's a little hard to see but here are all the names just like on this window. We're on a white background so they're hard to see. I'm going to right click where it said perspective. It allows me to pick camera and my physical camera. 
Once you have a camera selected, these controls in the bottom right corner shift, they change to a new set, which are all camera controls. The hand is kind of panning, but we call it a truck camera at this point. So we can move in here, and then I can um, dolly and move forward. Uh, that's pretty good. And looking at the, the clock from its side probably isn't the best position. I don't see much of it, so I'm going to click the select thing again. I'm just going to click in generic space, so I'm not having anything selected. And I'm going to drag from left to right. I have this set up so that it's like a bounding box. Uh, you might have it so that it selects everything. So the way to fix that, and I'll show you, is go edit, uh, let's see, actually tools, oh man, it's been a while, um, uh, customize, there we go, customize, preferences, um, and then you want an auto window crossing, right to left uh, crossing, and that'll make it so you have contained selections and, and everything it touches selections, so I want my contained selection there. Uh, I'm going to click my rotate, and then in top view here, I'm just going to rotate uh, the clock so that I see more of it. I can even rotate it. Uh, that's not the rotation I wanted. I wanted on the Z. So we'll rotate around that way, and then uh, here, we can just dip it down maybe a little bit like that. All right. So we've got the camera set up. We've got the background set up. We need a light. So just like before, next to the camera is light, and we need a V-ray light. Uh, we want a V-ray light here, and we can just make it a plane. Uh, so I'm just going to draw it in top plan, and plan view here, and make my light that big. And I can move it up in space, uh, and I can see it there in the scene, which is fine. Uh, really, it might help to be working in 3D space, um, so I can set up another view in perspective and leave my camera alone. But here in the side view, I'm going to take it, I'm going to rotate the light, and I'm just going to move the light so that it's like lighting my object. I can see the light here, and that's something I know I don't want. So with the light selected, I can go to my Modify panel and turn it to Invisible. Now I won't see it. Uh, so I think that's everything, and if I just went up and clicked Render Frame, I have to make sure that I'm in my camera view that I want to render. I'm going to click Render Frame. This is without setting up V-Ray. This is absolutely no settings whatsoever. Uh, we're just going to see what we get. Um, oh, and I clicked the wrong thing. That's the Render Frame, but I actually haven't told it to render. So I want to click Render Production. Uh, it pulls up and just does a quick render. Mind you, we, we have done nothing to set up V-Ray at all. This is just default 3D Studio Max V-Ray settings. Uh, I can see I pull my render over here. Uh, it's trying to work on those last six little frames. Uh, with all the shiny materials you can expect, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, and, you know, also production quality not that great. It's really gritty in the background. Uh, so we're going to come back and I'm going to show you a plugin I use for 3D Studio Max to control V-Ray called Solid Rocks. Uh, you can Google Solid Rocks and find it. It's uh, from uh, a developer in Paris, France, who offers an educational discount if you're looking to buy it. It is a fantastic piece of software, and I believe it's also available for trial, um, but has severe limitations for its trial. Uh, I bought it. I'm quite happy with it. It helps speed up the rendering, and I'll show you that and adding more lights up next.